The deck is a very special part of the process because it feels like everything you did up to this point actually mattered. You can actually see the boat coming together and forming and everything you planned out strategically is working. I've done many wooden decks in the past, so this won't be a repeat of content, but this will be embellishing on the specifics in what is relatively a very short video from start to finish going over those things. And then we move on to bigger and better things like full synthetic composite and aluminum decking. But until then, this is a 3 8 plywood full build. The lightest wooden deck that I have ever built. This is how we accomplished it. And this is how we made it look like this. Awesome end product, check it out. This is a 1448 John boat, so it took quite a bit of plywood. The deck was really wide, took a full two sheets. This is a 3 8 piece of project panel plywood. Weighs somewhere around 30-ish pounds for the whole thing. I mean, there's not much more you can go. I mean, you can go down to a quarter inch. I couldn't imagine making a deck out of a quarter inch and then not having to add substantial under supports in it, which would kill the whole thing. We do have to add under supports in parts of this, but a lot of it is standalone as long as you run the grain the right way. This is 20 ounce marine grade snagless carpet. If there's anything that I would like to do in this video, it is embellish on the qualities and the best way to put this on. I got this from my Amazon store. They folded it in half, which kind of pisses me off. If you get it from somewhere like like BassBoatSeats.com, they don't do that, um, but it is doable. It's able to be stretched over those panels. We left it out in the sun and it kind of de-wrinkled there. We got a heat gun and pushed on a few parts of the major creases and got it out there. And then ultimately, we used carpet glue and we didn't use contact cement, so we were able to adjust and pull as we put it over the the panels, and so it worked out fairly good. It did that the same thing with a Lund, so it's not a, a huge issue. I mean, the price was right. There was a lot of carpet. That was like just under $300 worth of carpet, and it did all my panels and hatches and everything to include extras. For most of the hatches, we did the traditional rubber matting underneath, but in spots where I felt there was going to be a lot of water or spots where I ran a lot of significant things like this where the matting just wasn't going to look good, we actually ran the EVA foam, the same stuff that we did the side panels and all, all the inner hatch linings with. And it worked out really well. Stuff's pretty versatile. You can cut it into all these little sections and you can fit it together and it looks seamless. We also got marine grade struts, which are a huge deal. No rusting. And they don't have that nasty kickback. And we also got rod grommets. And we had full cam lever latches from Perco. We got these all on BoatOutfitters.com, which is a pretty good place considering I looked a lot of other places. And in terms of competitive pricing, they were pretty competitive. Even competitive with Amazon and eBay. And they also had every latch you could ever think of. Every one under the sun. So there's no shortage of variety there. And I can't show you all of them, but I can show you what I did here. The end result for the locker was is one of the cleanest lockers that I've ever done. It's important to know that the hole needs to be smaller than the grommet itself, like fairly small, just enough for your rod buttons to go through. And how I spaced those perfectly in the middle is I just used the hole so that I cut the rods with to space the hole and the hole went right in there. That's in there, man. That's not moving. Look at that. It even keeps the reel from slacking down. So it'll stay that way. That's pretty good. With the router locker out of the way, now let's make the rest of the hatches. Most of the hatches required some sort of under supports. We used uh, 0.067 by 3 force aluminum tubing. And then we even ran some 3 force angle in there with holes to slot for jigs and spinner baits. The bigger thing is we are able to run these cam lever latches. These are Perco cam lever latches. These are non-locking, but they sell locking for not all that much more. As long as you have a fairly good hole saw and you're very careful, very, very careful because we fabricated everything before we actually put the lever on. We resealed the hole with silicone again because we broke the seal of the paint. Now all we have to do is just attach it in there. Fits pretty plush. I can't imagine using them on anything much thicker than three eighths or half inch where you would start running into problems if you dress the underneath. But we ran all those latches inside most of the major compartments. 
and they came out really awesome looking. The last thing you'll have to do by prepping up your deck and making sure it fits perfect while looking seamless is you're going to have to give it a haircut on the hatch sides and that's as shallow or as deep as you need it to go. What this will do is it'll it'll free your hatches from binding and it will look more seamless and something about cutting the edges like the, the thickness of the carpet especially like 20 and 24 ounce carpet it likes to kind of part like hair so if you give it a haircut like that and you trim it up it actually doesn't do that it looks a lot better so the adjustments are made here and the deck looks seamless the only thing left is to attach the remaining hatches and make sure everything's good final check it and then let's get it on the water if you're wondering about any of these processes if you saw anything in this boat and you're wondering how it was done there is a full public playlist for this boat from start to finish and there is an extensive like 30 video playlist hours long of this boat from start to finish on patreon that's www.patreon.com slash tv nation check us out there and uh, wait for the end reveal i don't have a whole lot for the ending like this that kind of got botched but the process from start to finish of the boat being done will blow your mind and that is coming up next in this series to kick this thing off as we move on to bigger and better things this is the best way i can imagine to do my last John boat, so stay tuned.